Hey guys, like Herb Trimpy said, and Hulk, dealing with Anthony is no headache. I love this piece. Herb did this for me. I mean, I really actually said it because I wrote it and I, I, I asked him to do it, but the longer he's been gone, the more important and, and uh, I value this. This is really cool to me. Anyway, so we got a couple things here going. I'm Anthony from Anthony's Comic Book Art and this is our daily update. We got the stuff that went up on the site last night. We got a, a lot of colored stuff from the very prolific Luis Dominguez. Strategically placed uh, post-it. Got a romance cover, a western cover. This this was this kind of looks unused. It like he didn't really finish it, so but it's kind of like a gun maw and a gangster. This was a, he's from, he was from Argentina and he was doing work in Argentina before he came to the States. So this was a title that he was doing of that nurse, but it's really beautiful stuff. And like, this is another example of that kind of story illustration he was doing down in South America, 1956. And then, uh, this is a, a color storyboard from a, an American Pantene shampoo commercial. Just beautiful model girls. I like it. This one I almost took home because it's just really killer. Like fashion, glamazon. And then you have like a children's book, like a treasure treasure chest and pirates. It's really fun. You know, if you like, you know, people come up to me a lot at shows and says, you got anything that's good for my kid's room? I mean, that is good for your kids room all right so here's a really cool polynesian babe some sci-fi cover prelims another children's book normandy landing for some reason he was doing the the neil adams uh dead man first appearance dead man this is beautiful because it's finished pencils like a i guess i guess it's kind of a spy girl thing because it's like it's kind of like East West Germany kind of feel to it. She, he, she's got a German gun. And then if you love Jesus, you know, that's for you. These are some uh, Louis Dominguez, believe it or not. And it's like a jungle adventure cover. But here's some other stuff. Now, this is really strong. This is like. The best action Gonzalo Mayo Vampirella page I've ever had. You don't really, I mean, you know, there wasn't a lot of action in the in the Vampirella Warren stuff, so we like that. Boris Karloff, whole story. Robin Hood whole stories. Kurt Schaffenberger, Superboy Splash, a really nice, uh, fun Strange Adventures. It's Strange Adventures. But it's kind of like a non-hero one after it, after it, it changed. This is a Eduardo Barreto Superman versus some T-Rexes. I, I gotta I gotta love the T-Rexes. And this is a new deal I just got. I just got moments ago. What walked in today? So if you like. Spider Woman, and you like action, that's for you. Spider Woman, Legion of Superheroes, Legion of Superheroes, Mike Grell, Green Lantern, Marshall Rogers, Doctor Strange. This is uh, from the two in one annual, but it looks really good. Cloak and Dagger and Doctor Strange, Silvestri, Cloak and Dagger again. Oh, John Romita Jr. Now this I think is inked by Dan Green. He did a really good job on, on these issues. He really cleaned him up and it's a really beautiful storm with the, uh, you know, this was when she had the Mohawk and then they went away from it and then they came back back to it, you know. It was, so that's, now that's a current version of Storm like the, in the movie version as well. She had a Mohawk, right? Right. And hard to get, hard to find shadow art. It's by E.R. Cruz, 
but it's got a great feel to it. So that just walked in. I have to work on that and price these up. Uh, I want to pay a little tribute to uh, a, an artist that I love that's one of my favorite artists of all time, Nick Cardi. So I have the Batlash, the Super Sons, and the Ghost cover. It would have been his 100th birthday. I got a bunch of stuff from the family after he passed away. Still have stuff like, like this, like layouts prelims, a lot of this stuff uh, is on my website. All this stuff is on my website. So, you know, just saying hi to the Nick Cardi out there and all you Nick Cardi fans. So, Thursday, this is the important gig that we have. We're doing, we're launching the mainframe Baltimore Con programming with a claim sale. Now, so all this stuff up here is, is available and we're we're working on that and I have a consigner here Patrick hello Sullivan hey, Sullivan how you doing mr. Sullivan here is a, a, a wheeler dealer he's a hustler he works up and down the East Coast and uh, he responded to my invitation to be part of this and it brought some stuff in so What's fun about some of the stuff you brought in, Patrick? What's the best thing you brought in? What, what's your favorite? That, that, now, this has got to be the best piece because this is PEP 36 with the, the, the uh, MLJ. It, it, it was before it was Archie Comics, MLJ Magazine's Heroes, where they were trying to do Heroes, and then they brought Archie in. It's Archie's right? first cover appearance in the title of PEP. Yeah. Not his, not his first appearance, that was, which one? Pep 22 or something, it's an earlier issue of Pep, I can't remember. Okay. Alright, so they were mostly trying to go for like these uh, knockoff heroes at the time, because this is, this is wartime, right? Yeah, so yep. the wartime stuff was going on, and this is kind of the, this is historical in the comic sense, because this is where this magazine and this publisher kind of turned the corner and went into the the teen humor teen market. Yeah. yeah, right. This is the very beginning of and it. And then for decades, I mean, Archie. If you look at the at the at the circulation numbers, Archie was actually out circulating Marvel and DC. You know, they, so they were actually uh, you know the number one company for a long time. Uh, if you put it into years, I, I, I would have to research that, but they took over the teen humor market and the girls market and, uh, you know, was killing it for a, a long time. This is the beginning, and after this, they sold millions of Archie books every month for decades. Right. Many decades. Uh, that's what I just said. Yes. But thank very, you for look, clearing that up for me. You're very articulate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's funny. And then... This is really cool. This came in with you, and uh, I've never had one of these before. This is a giveaway, right? Yeah, it's a promotional book, and it was uh, sent through the mail. It's got an address on it in Massachusetts, which is roughly where I bought it. Um, and yeah, I've never seen one before either. And, this, and it's got Archie uh, whistling at Betty and Veronica. And it's drawn by, uh, I, I don't know who the artist is, but it's drawn by, it's an uncommon style of Archie. In Art. It's an uncommon look for Betty and Veronica. Yeah. Well, it says it's publications, but sometimes when they did like giveaways or promotional books, it, it kind of got hired out to somebody else and they interpreted it. You know, it wasn't the regular staff guys. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That happened a lot with, uh, you know, they considered it an outside job and, and maybe they, uh, this was for a client and the client had to approve the style. You know, me being a former advertising photographer, I had to go through that, you know, client approval stuff a lot. So they would, you know, oh, we like this guy for us because, you know, if our name is going to be on it, we want to, uh, you know, we want to approve the look of the whole thing. So now is this, this is a Blue Beetle 1 from 64. So that's first, the first, first Blue series. Beetle. Yep. First Blue Beetle. Uh, the first Madame, uh, Mademoiselle Marie. It was a very popular wartime character, and just a really high-grade 
high-grade uh, romance from 1953. What, what else has got here? Uh, this, this you like a lot, right? Yep. Then we get into the good modern books. This is like one of the hottest Venom books going right now. The first appearance of Null. Perfect 9.8 copy. We've got the first appearance of Silk, uh, a character that's rumored to uh, to have some movie potential in the future. Yeah. This is a brand new book. This At is least on, if it's not a movie, it's probably going to be on Disney Plus. I mean, because I just watched the, what they're, they have in store for Disney Plus, and they're establishing a whole, like, uh, I, let's say, t yeah, they're, they're establishing a whole TV universe. universe on Disney Plus. Yep. You know, they pulled back on the Netflix, uh, you know, uh, properties of Daredevil and uh, Luke Cage and, and Alias. And, uh, and uh, so now they're doing, you know, what's, what I'm looking forward to the most is Wanda, WandaVision, you know, like, because she's magic and, and uh, she's going back and forth in time and stuff like that. There's, there was a, a really cool uh, preview from last Comic-Con with, uh, with the, the guy who heads up uh, Marvel Studios and he had everybody out, you know, the Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, is another one, and what else did they show? She-Hulk, they're having a She-Hulk uh, show, and it's just, yeah, I'm really looking forward to a lot of stuff. I mean, they can't, if, if you can't have the movies, you know, let's have some good streaming stuff going on. All right, so what else is, well, this is fun, right? Okay, so this is, I believe, the second appearance of the Robin King, but this is his first uh, really nice cover appearance. It's a hot book, I sold a bunch of them. Here's another perfect 9.8. Uh, it's still affordable too, I think this is under $100. Uh, this is where it gets exciting. This is the first appearance of Amadeus Cho, uh, the Korean cult character who is also rumored to have some television or movie potential. Got a perfect copy of Booster Gold number one, which is the first appearance. Uh, I love books like this where it's the character's first appearance in his own title. It never happens anymore. Um, Thor yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna talk about that one. What do you want me to talk say about it? Well, I saw that cover. You know. It's oh, like you had that cover. No, I had this cover. Oh, you had yeah, that yeah. cover. Oh, yeah, man. because I represent us. Yeah, right. Uh, that makes sense. And uh, is this a wraparound? No, it's just a single. But I sold. Oh, yeah, the the uh, gore. Is it gore? It's, I forget, something the God Butcher. God Butcher. God Butcher. Who's Isn't a, it gore the God Butcher? Uh, that's probably exactly right. Yeah, Very so. popular character. I haven't read it myself, uh, but I've sold a bunch of copies and I, I know for sure it's a hot book. Uh, yeah, well, these hot books are being generated by the first appearance of villains. This is Null. This is this one. Is this a villain? This is a bad yeah, yeah, villain? Yeah, evil uh, villain. This is the Thor villain. Uh, it's like, wow, you know, this is... This is a black uh, mask. Black mask a villain. So you got a lot of these. You know, it's hard to create new, fun, good superheroes. So like, we got to create new villains. Yeah, now villains it's all the way back to here. First yeah. appearance of Sabretooth, an yeah. absolutely classic character now. Absolutely. Carnage. I mean, Carnage was a villain at least in the beginning. And the best voiceover actor in the business. Yeah. You know. Who played Sabretooth? It happened. He's got a f***ed up name. That's I don't know, right. Sabretooth I always in forget. what? I can't remember what you're talking about. Oh, oh, oh Wolverine, Wolverine Origins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Origins. Um, I don't know who played Sabretooth, but I did see Oh, was it Leif Schreiber? Leif Sh Le I, I always, I, I have trouble with his name. Leif, and it's, who's the super good documentary guy? Super good documentary, From Ken Burns? Ken Burns, yes. Okay, there we go. Everybody loves Sabretooth. That's, that's what we're really trying to say here. Just like Carnage. Now, this is a super exciting book simply because uh, there's another Venom movie, you know, on the horizon. It's going to feature Carnage. People are nuts about Carnage. These prices have been rising steadily in the past year, uh, past several years, really. But this past year has been real exciting. Uh, speaking of movies and television, this is Sandman number eight, another book that's done really well. It's the first appearance at Death. This is going to be a an Amazon Prime uh, series, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's super excited. Is it going to be Sandman, Sandman, or, or Death? Okay. Yeah, well, Sandman, but but Sandman, but, all but, right. but both uh, all, all the key books from Sandman, which are basically Sandman number one and Sandman number eight, have done very well in the past year. They've risen significantly, and the demand is very high. I can attest to that for certain. So what do you got here? What is this uh, Hama Hama Hammock him in? This is great. This is a Finnish mm -hmm. version Finnish? Oh. of Spider-Man 129. It's black and white. 
They only made 1,000 copies of this book. It's limited to 1,000 pieces. It's from 1994, and this is a perfect 9.8. I've had probably 10 of the 1,000 copies, and this is the only perfect one I've had. Really? So that's in 94 they were making limited run things. Not, it's not like these store variants and stuff like that so hot right now. Wow, that's, so that's pretty cool. And uh, the cover art uh, just came up. Uh, uh, it's going to be on Comic Connects, exactly, uh, with a $2 million valuation. Mm, yeah, okay. On to the but next. I love this book because, uh, you know, I keep saying I had a bunch of pages from this, you know, that I brought to market, including the first costume page. Uh, that one that I had that was signed by Stan Lee did so. Uh, so this is the first. This is the first. Fantastic. Uh, you know, the Age of Marvel started with this. Well, it's the first costumes too. Yep. First costumes. Yeah. Well, so, you're right. So that really is the, the, yeah, the, this is where the, the dawn of the superhero age, right? The here. dawn of the Marvel Age of Comics is the FF3. That's really, you know, you can say FF1, but FF3 is where they, you know, start put them in costumes and made them costume heroes. And the Spider-Man is a book and record edition, but, you know, it's always fun to look at that image. You know. Which is the, the golden record. Oh, What If is the other one. They're doing a What If animated. Yeah, so that's cool. So a lot of those good what if, what if stories, they can, you know, they can animate. They're easier to animate than, like, what if Conan uh, lived in the 20th century or whatever, went through a time portal and stuff like that. So uh, we'll be we'll be prepared to see some of those books rise in value as uh, as people as find do, out yeah. which ones you are know, getting adapted. Well, the most valuable one I think right now is Jane like Foster. what if Jane Foster had the power of Thor? Like if she found the the, the hammer. So uh, yeah, so we got some uh, first print Killing Joke, first print uh, Dark Knight Returns, first uh, Saga of the Swamp Thing. We got a lead on uh, on a little bit of that. Uh, Got a lead on something. This saga of this one thing is such a hot book right now. I was just looking. You cannot go on eBay and buy a price anywhere near the reasonable market value. People are asking a thousand dollars more than the last sale uh, to buy a copy of that book on the internet right now. Of course, we're going to be doing that. Yeah, I haven't that. seen that. That show. That show started too. So that's you know here we are. You know, media driving price points in the comic business, and we're going to be offering all this stuff to you on a claim sale. Thursday, opening the Baltimore Comic Con, and that's done by Chad and the guys at Mainframe. So the Baltimore Comic Con will be kicked off with a flame sale by me and uh, some some of my uh, friends here that are dropping off some stuff. Here's the you know three more boxes of stuff that we're gonna we're gonna be offering. And we'll have an hour or two to do this on Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure what time we're starting yet, but we're going to have a bunch of fun stuff for sale. Uh, we're only going to do comics right now, but I don't know, maybe I'll sneak in some new art because uh, I did do a big deal and we're still working on that stuff as well. So I'm Anthony Snyder from Anthony's Comic Book Art. And thank you to my friend Patrick Sullivan for thank coming you. by and contributing. And remember, Thursday evening, the mainframe platform, we're going to do a claim sale with all this. I'll be on the Golden Guys tonight uh, on their podcast uh, uh, channel on, on YouTube. So check me out there. I'll be on there for about an hour. And we're looking forward to Thursday. It's going to be a fun week. And don't forget, keep calm and, and keep collecting.